Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inkas and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be checking out uh, this guy in here which is the old uh, Siemens S7, uh, S7, it's not 700, S7 uh, 200 PLC. These have still a lot of them is still around everywhere. So I thought I will make a video as what software do we need to program these guys and uh, upload download the program. That's exactly what we're going to check in. And what sort of cables we're going to use. And also we are going to be checking out the wiring. So that's the one thing that uh, a lot of the engineers I met and they haven't got a clue how this thing is wired in the first place. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to be talking to exactly how this is wired. This particular unit is actually relay. Uh, relay unit. That's I don't know all one we're going to be using because we always in a lot of my videos we're using a relay units. But today we're going to be using transistor units. So I'm going to be running you through how transistor output uh, work and obviously the inputs are there as, as usual. But the transistor outputs. So that's pretty much what we are going to be uh, doing today regarding with this PLC. We're going to be uh, wiring that in on our PLC training rig, creating a small program, upload and download and things like that. So with the uh, for the upload download we are going to be using this guy in here which is a, uh, I, th I don't know, I do believe this is one of the latest releases for S7, so it's a PC adapter USB A2. So there's a several different older versions, I definitely know that's that out there in different other ways. So uh, this particular connection today is going to be made just for this converter, which is a uh, USB converter. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. So without further ado, let's get started. And before before we get started, don't forget to check out the description now. I have left a ton of uh, uh, manuals, really good manuals, very, very down to detail explanations of all sorts of different wires for all different controllers and things like that. So do check out the description below and possibly, possibly in the future we're going to be doing, uh, see how to wire all the additional cards for this unit. So without further ado now, let's get started. <music> Here we are. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to be checking out uh, the wiring and all the terminals and things like that. The one thing is that really, really always um, does as my brain is that Siemens has done everything upside down. So uh, what I'm used to usually. So uh, the inputs are in the bottom, outputs are on the top. So that's the one thing we need to remember. And this guy in here, they, you can have memory, you can have battery down there, you can have empty. Depending what kind of system you have, it's, it's entirely uh, optional. This guy in here, they have two RS-485 ports for communication, going to be using a, a zero. So, and then we have in here, we have a, a um, run and term and stop. So basically to controlling your, your uh, controllers uh, starts and stops. And also in the end, you can have a, a expansion unit being plugged in here in this guy in here. So uh, then we have a look at this, these uh, IOs in here. The first one we're going to start is our inputs as usually. And the, the power source is actually this side in here, these two in here, M plus and L plus in there. That's M and L plus in here. So this is down DC. There's Earth as well down there, but we're not using it because ah, this is for testing anyway, so we'll be fine for now. And and obviously then the, the, the power comes through comes come, comes through here. So uh, you sort of uh, can see in this little diagram in here, I'm not sure you, how you can see it in here. So you can see that it's like a power goes in and then it's just like a 24 volt DC output. I'm not really getting that 24 volt DC out of it, but never, nevertheless, I'll show you. Whatever reason I'm not getting it, but it doesn't matter. It still works perfectly well. So if you measure it, can you see the screen in there? If you measure it in here, so what are we getting in there? Come on. Are we getting anything? There we go, we're getting about 20, 23 volts out of it, 20, 22 and a half. It's sufficient enough because it works, all the inputs will work from 20 volts uh, upwards, uh, all the way to 28. So, so yeah, for the inputs, what we need to do is you have to choose what you're going to be using, PMP or MPN. I'm using going to be using PMP, so M1 for PNP will be plus. For NPM, no, sorry, for, for PMP, uh, M1 is going to be the minus. And for a uh, PM, uh, NPM, uh, M is going to be a plus. So uh, I am sending uh, back 24 volts. So uh, that's exactly what's going to be happening here. And uh, that, so uh, I'm going to be using a minus a two this M in here. And obviously, obviously each bank requires his own uh, source. So that's exactly what, what you need to do to so make sure that the T minus, if you want to power this beside as well with that same power supply, 
Make sure that T minus is in here as well and all the pluses, yeah, make sure they come from the same power supply where the T minus would come from, otherwise it will not work. So uh, as you can see down here with my uh, pluses in here, as you can see my T plus comes to my switches and then obviously uh, every time the switch is going to be uh, switched it will send the signal back to the controller and controller will know that he has received that specific uh, signal from that switch or sensor or whatever you want to be. For the change, as you can see, this controller is actually different than what we had in a uh, introduction. So, because we are using a transistor uh, output uh, uh, unit, as you can see down there, DC, DC, DC. So, pretty much that indicates that that is a DC output for it. And each a group of the uh, outputs, these are transistors in here. So, you can see blocks and air blocks, in here. they need their own power supply. You can use the same power supply as uh your controller if you wish i don't usually do that i usually separate my outputs away from the input so that's just me personal preference doesn't have to be like that. it's just a personal preference uh, as you can see uh m1 and l1 is that this is uh, comes from my s power supply and that pretty much will power up the bank this bank in here and uh these two in here will be the again you can use again you can link it across to make sure this bank is powered as well and every time the relay will come on it will send the 24 volt signal out at 20 volts out and i'll send two so you can see down here we have a uh i have my inputs for my board to run forwards and run in reverse and uh plus i have my lights in here as you can see my s minus coming in here send the neutral to my lamps in the back in here and they'll be receiving 24 volt signals from my uh transistor outputs from over here and that will turn on my lamps and that's pretty much the wiring part of it i will leave uh this uh, manual this uh, s200 s7200 manual and there's really good very 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 it gives you a good explanation of how to program and everything like that using microwind and cabling and pretty much everything is in one manual i'll leave that in the description below if you do want to check it up so uh so hopefully that is all making sense so uh, remember transistors needs its own power supply and input depending how you want to control it i'm always putting that i'm always sending that 24 if you send a 24 volt uh, by, uh plus uh, back to make sure that's a minus if you send in a minus back 24 volt minus back make sure that is a plus so that's pretty much the easiest way to explain you can take that from here as well that's pretty much the same as that so uh so having done that so hopefully that is making sense now to you how the wiring works so uh, we're going to plug a uh, our unit, as you can see down there. This is our a, uh, PC adapter USB A2. So it's a bit, a bit newer than uh, before they uh, start came in out. So we're now going to plug that in into my uh, USB. So I just heard computer already going on and my it's pretty much going to look alike. Uh, so so uh, next thing, let's catch up, see how to get the communications going. Here we are, so microwin is open. So first thing we're going to need to do is make sure our uh, set PC, uh, PG slash PC interfaces are uh, selected properly. So you can see down there, it's a PC adapter, USB A2, Profibus.1. That's this guy in here. And if you go into a, a diagnostics, click test. Make sure if everything goes well, so this will uh, pop up. But that doesn't mean you are uh, connected yet. So there's one thing you need to do, you need to click the read. So one of these needs to uh, uh, show up in there as a bus node. So if the tick comes up, it's communicating with you more or less with your controller. There we go, the bus node that's happened. If that doesn't happen, something is uh, not uh, right. So I uh, do make sure then check up on it. Something may maybe not be set up correctly or plugged into the wrong port. So uh, having done that, so we are pretty much okay with uh, that. So uh, next thing is, as uh, you can see, there we go, controller in here. So double click on that one and uh, click communications and then do the double uh, double click in here. Here we go, let him uh, find the uh, controller. So he's looking for one now. And there we go, we found a controller. So that's, it means that means it's all okay. And the one thing I've forgotten here, this 9.6, this is something we need to transmission rate. We always need to make sure that is that transmission rate. If that is not there, it will struggle to communicate. So just click on that one and click okay. 
and uh, then OK. And as you can see up here, that's changed now. Now he understands uh, what is going on. So it, so that's the actual PLC in, in actual the firm rate and everything, firmware and everything lies there as well. So let me quickly show you that PC uh, thing. And if you go into properties, make sure in here your transmission rate select that one to 9.6. That is a crucial one to make sure that, that is the case. And check that one, PC, uh, PG slash PC is the only master on the bus, so make sure that's clicked as well if you're using just one controller. So, uh, having done that, so let's uh, uh, upload what's uh, what's what's inside the controller. So, uh, no, we don't want to check anything. Let's get it, get it all out. So, let's wait that happens. So, uh, and here we go. So, uh, what have we got in here? Recipes. Uh, no, we don't want anything about memory cartridge. I'm pretty sure it's empty because I emptied it. So, here we go. So, now it will start pumping everything out of the PLC. This is pretty much how you get information out of your PLC. So, once you've done that, oh, no, no, not that one. This one. And this is your OB1. This is your main block. So, uh, and from there on, you pretty much can see exactly what it will be. could be a lot of uh, blocks down here. You can add, add and things like that. You can start changing program. But pretty much this video is all about uh, giving you understanding about the controller, how to get program out, and what we're going to do in here. We are going to a uh, to create this program. So it's just, just a very basic sample program. It's basically by clicking these guys and it just gives you options in there again. To get into that, that's a different type of a uh, different type of video. So we probably I'm probably not going to be running the programming videos for this type. This the, these controls I'll be running on a S7 1200 uh, series uh, PLC. So we can be checking that on our training rig how the program runs. So that's pretty much how you get the program out. And then if you want to save it, obviously just click on save and I don't know project one. Yeah, it's all right. I want to say that you can keep that for a rainy day when you're going to need to replace the controller. And if you're happy and done all your changes and things like that, or oh, let's say it's probably going to ask me to let's say Q0.1. Here we go. So the inputs are marked as I's and the outputs are marked as Q's. So, uh, and it says, is, is if you look at the actual control itself, is, is, is the first bank starts at 0, 0.0, and the second bank will start 1.0 and onwards. So, pretty much uh, remember that it's like I'm using the input 0, so I'm using 0, 0, input uh, 2 would be my uh, 0, 0.01, and so on. So, that's pretty much how the eyes and how the outputs are marked. So once we once say happy, we always need to make sure we compile all and make sure that down here there is no errors. That's the key. There's a basic again, basic introduction. Give you a little, a little um, run of how to uh, just get yourself going in here. If no errors appear, then you are good to uh, download into your controller. And by clicking that on our controller, just click download. Yes, stop the PLC and it's going to pump everything into the controller. There you go. And put it back in a run mode. And that's pretty much how you get the program in, how to how you establish the communication. So hopefully I explained it more or less there, understandably. Once you've done that, so uh, you pretty much have uploaded and downloaded the program. So you pretty much uh, got yourself into a good position to understanding how to even how to more or less get started. So let's get jump back on the actual controller and see how that works. Here we are. So as you, you can see down there, as my activity is flashing, it's pretty much is telling you that it's been connected to the computer and other communications are happening. So that's a good indication everything is going well. So but we're not going to be doing that now. So let's unplug that. So uh, next thing is, as you can see, let me zoom this one out without... Uh, oop. There we are. So uh, remember what we did with the, with the little program I showed you in there. This is our start. As you can see, the belt is going forwards. This is our stop. And as you can see, the lamps are coming on at the same time. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty much how you work with uh, S200, how to get the program in and out. And uh, do remember the micro VIN uh, 4.0, and I think it's back 9, is still available but to be purchased from many, many retailers. So the, don't worry, guys. More or less, uh, is, is, is still out there. It does work in Windows 10. There's just several things you need to do when you install it. So it's, it's mainly to do with the... Uh, what's it called, the, the, the PDF files that come with it. 
there are help files and things like that. You have to uh, follow the small instructions what, 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 what the, uh, the program is telling you to do. Other than that, it works very well on a Windows 10 as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this is making sense to you and you're when you're well on your way to understanding how to upload download program from S200. Uh, S7200 PLCs. So we are not going to be running much of a programming videos on these. We're probably going to be looking at some additional cards for these units to see how to get them read and how they get them working. But you're going to have a very nice manual in there, which is going to give you pretty much very, very good insight. As long as you're not lazy to read it, you should be just fine. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, smash that like if you liked the video. If you didn't, smash the dislike. Comment below any questions, anything like that, do ask and I will ask them, answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. Do bear in mind, this is not my PLC that I always work with, but because I am been working with many of these PLCs and do a lot of testing them, uh, I do uh, know a bit, a little bit more, a little bit uh, about them, not in more much depth into programming. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.